And I think that one of the problems is we, we are getting this wrong. It, and oftentimes it's a generational like uh, seesaw effect. So you have one generation and there's just, it was very rigid. You will be this. We mm -hmm. are passing the business down to you, whether you like it or not. You know, I mean, it, you will live here. You will have this many children. <laughs> it's like just way too, way too specific vision from, from some kind of uh, the, the patriarch of the family. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you have the complete abdication of the next generation where it's like, we're not going to give our kids anything. I'm going to cut you off at 18. Good luck, you know, like with your life. And there's, we're not going to get like, there's no vision. There's no, there's no connection. There's no culture. There's no identity. And, and, and that's what I find so powerful about calling over identity. Cause I think there's elements of identity. I don't know if you guys dig into this. I'm curious, like, so there's identity in terms of how the individuals of the family are built, but then there's also a historic identity, which is part of what this mm -hmm. play was attempting to, to, to begin to, um, to, to describe, uh, and, and within Jewish families, you see this so deep, like, like a lot of where the identity comes from is that around the Shabbat table, you're hearing about, you know, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 generations of mm -hmm, the family mm -hmm. and stories and what we went through. And then, you know, your great, 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 great grandfather did this and grandmother did this and all this. And so it's it just, you're a 12 year old kid going just infused with all this identity that's coming from the past, which, which carries with it, you know, values like mm -hmm. resilience or like, things that your family went through that are just, they're being inst basically installed into you through family storytelling. So yeah, how have, how have you guys seen the impact of the past generation, especially because in this culture, many of us don't have any idea where we came from. I mean, we can't, That's right. you know, it's just like, it's like a blank slate back there. Um, yeah. How have you guys interacted with, uh, with, with the idea of, of the past or, or roots um, for, for I think it's it, it's exactly like you're saying. I mean, understanding that you are part of a bigger picture and understanding that you are part of a common picture in one big thing. Um, so uh, I had, I'll take it to chicken. Um, I had a buddy who his whole job was to go open up franchises, local franchises of a chicken fast food restaurant across the country. And I asked him, I said, okay, David, okay, but how does that work? Because I am sure the, the Kane's chicken here in Oklahoma city has a completely different culture than the store in Baton Rouge or Denver, or Chicago, or wherever it is. And he goes, no, oh, no, 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 Derek, you think too small. Um, the Oklahoma city store has a different personality, but they all have this part of the same culture. And I think that's the connection there is understanding, hey, when we are part of something that's bigger than us, multi-generation, 30, 40, 50 generations, when we're grafted into um, the, the Israelites, I mean, we're the, we're the ones that are grafted in. They're not grafted in us. Right. You know, we're grafted into this gigantic story that, that laces throughout the entire Bible. Yeah. Hey, our family can have a personality but it's all, it, it's all carried through values of, of a similar culture. Yeah. And, and I think that's how we, we can think of it. We don't, don't always, I don't always, but I think we can. Okay. Different personality, but all the same culture. Yeah. I, I think those differentiations are really important to explore. Uh, cause I like that because yeah, you're going to get, you don't want to reset culture every generation if possible. I mean, there, there are hard one lessons that a generation can can win and know that it's not just going to die with them I mean, why mm -hmm. would what what good is that this is the reason why i think a lot of people become obsessed with sports or work or anything else besides the family because it feels like things that are in the family don't last uh, mm -hmm. but you know when you go to these multi-generational families and you see the amount of impact that these stories have um, then you can you can say oh there is a there is a way to transmit dna not just physical, but, but culture, cultural down mm -hmm. the generations. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think one of the things we've discovered is you, if you encode those into specific rhythms, um, they, they have a, a much higher degree of likelihood to continue, uh, multi-generationally. Fortunately, now that we've, we've lived, um, as a human species for long enough, you can look at the cultures where this is happening and it is, I don't, I don't really don't know of a, of a better example than the Jewish culture with some of the actual rhythms and, and you see God himself installing that DNA all the way back in the old Testament saying, mm -hmm. you know, celebrate this Passover. And when you celebrate it, 
and your son asks, why do we do this and this and this? Tell him this and this and this. He's like giving them direct, this is how you pass on DNA. You create these rhythms, you repeat them on some kind of regular weekly or annual basis. And this, in, this in, initiates a conversation with the next generation. And then as you have that conversation, these, these cultural values get passed on and get imbibed by that, that generation. So that, that process is, I think, really important. 